Okay, so uh, hi guys, great tens. Um, our plan for today is sorry, not this document, not this one. It's this one. Today we're going to talk about uh, starting to talk about morals. Um, we're going to talk about what actually we're going to start talking about COVID nineteen first, and then we're going to talk about morals. And how we actually need, to, um, especially at this point in time in history, how we need to include think uh, moral thinking uh, as well as ethics debating on that in science. So there will be two videos at this, at least two videos um, about that. So let's talk about the COVID nineteen first. I'm sure you guys have a lot of questions and things like that i'm gonna add a playlist i'm gonna make a playlist of uh excuse me COVID 19 videos um i'm not gonna make them mandatory watching so it's not gonna be on a puzzle but i'll add it onto our documents over here so you can see you can look at it later on but let's get this started so we're going to talk about COVID 19 it is a virus. So a few things. So that's the official name for SARS COVID nineteen. COVID nineteen. Now I know in the past there's a lot of hello. I know in the past there's a lot of talk about how do you name this virus? What kind of name is? What kind of name is proper? And there's of course some people are calling it. Um, or some people are still calling it the Wuhan virus or just calling a Chinese one world leader calling it a Chinese virus, which is horribly uh, racist. Now, according to World Health Organization, according to World Health Organization back in 2015, they actually said they actually said um, rather than naming a virus after a geographical location or a particular animal like swine flu or swine flu or avian flu or things like that, um, we're gonna, they're just going to have naming uh, procedure. And so you just have the year and what type of virus it is, what kind of condition it causes. So that's basically the rule that comes up. So yes, some people are so. So how about Spanish flu or uh, SARS or uh, yeah? That's why we changed the name now. The official name is this. Okay, that's the best practice by the World Health Organization uh, since two thousand fifteen. So there are many coronavirus. You would probably encounter some coronavirus before. Because, for example, it's uh, it's one that includes SARS. You might have heard that. Uh, I think you'll probably be too young, but your older brother or your parents might remember it about 10 years ago, 10, 15 years ago. And, of course, the common cold. It is a type of coronavirus. It's very different. This is a picture of it. You can read. Um, now, what is a virus? In biology, we do not consider virus as living things simply because there's usually a list of things uh, living things need to be able to do in order to be, uh, well, things need to be able to do to consider living things. So, for example, um, take a nutrient, respond to stimulus, um, respond to stimulus, uh, taking in nutrition, movement, things like that. Now, virus, it actually uh, need a host to be able to make more of itself. Okay, so the ability to replicate or the ability to reproduce, a virus itself cannot do that. You actually, you actually have to hijack a cell, to hijack a cell to uh, in order to make more copy of itself. So this is, so in some ways. That's the reason why virus is not a living thing. Now, body usually send white blood cells. You have inflammation and pus. So that's why you have a fever, things like that. 
Now, COVID-19, it's not definitive. I know some of you might have heard of the bat soup video, blah, blah, blah. Now, we are not entirely sure what it is. The most likely scenario that scientists are looking into at this point is that it was probably a virus that happens in bats. Now, usually viruses kind of viruses or disease usually have a specific host or specific um yeah so have a specific host that they will um infect or get sick so for us for example for us we have a common coal okay common coal is humans have it we get a little sick we usually are okay and then we it's it's over a common coal, for example, the virus of common coal probably won't get other uh, animals sick. Okay, so for example, if you have a coal and you sneeze onto your cat, chances are your cat won't catch it because it doesn't work that way. Okay, the virus won't infect the animal. Occasionally, you will have you will see something which, occasionally, you will see a virus mutate. Sorry, the garage door is opening. Occasionally, the a virus can mutate, and in this case, an animal virus can, instead of only infecting other animal, might all of a sudden be able to infect human. These things happen. Okay, mutation happens simply because when genes are when genes or DNA or RNA making copy of itself, a lot of times they make mistakes and. Sometimes these mis a lot of times these mistakes are not good. Like basically it won't work. But sometimes you might have a mutation or a mistake which allows it to infect human. This is what happens. Okay. So um, let's pause here before I move on. Do you have any question about COVID-19? So COVID-19, so basically it's really just a, yeah, really it's just a membrane. You have some protein spikes and you have the genetic material. Now, COVID-19 is what they call an RNA virus. You definitely have heard of DNA in science before. You may or may not heard of RNA. RNA is a type of genetic material uh, it's very similar to DNA. Okay, it's very similar to DNA, but it is uh, yeah, but it is a little different. Okay, uh, we'll talk a little bit more later on when we're talking about the DNA uh, COVID nineteen testing. Uh, but keep in mind that there's an RNA virus; it mutates a lot more. Uh, to simplify, to simply call it. Okay, but right now, do you have any question? Pause here. Write this down. Now, next thing I want to talk about is, so how can you prevent the spread of COVID-19? Why, why do you think these strategies work? You probably heard of them before. So at this point, write your answer. Okay. At this point, I'm assuming that most of you are talking about washing your hands. So why on earth would washing hands work? I'm going to move this over here. Seems to be blocking a lot of things. So the reason why washing your hands work is because a alcohol and soap. Now, this is a little bit of a chemistry bit, but biology, you learn chemistry too. So this is actually a membrane, okay? This is what we call the um, phospholipid bilayer membrane. Because a plasma membrane is actually two layers of the same material, but kind of, if you think about your hand, the palm of my hand, and the back of my hand, membrane is really much like this, okay? The two palms are two, two facing each other and the two back are facing outside. This is kind of how, if you want to think of the phospholipid bilayer or membrane, this is how it looks like. 
Okay. I'm recording right now. You're recorded. So, anyways. So, anyways, um, in this case, this part inside is hydrophobic. It avoids water. And that side that's on the outside, it likes water. So, it's called hydrophilic. So, palm. Palm is like the hydrophobic part. It's face inside. The back of my hand are the hydrophilic side. So in this case, these will be facing the water, so to speak. And I think we talk about membrane and membrane transport before the big lab. Okay. So soap and alcohol can actually remove this membrane because if you look at the viral particle, you have capsules on the outside, but you also have... You also have inside here a membrane, so it will help. Also, another reason why washing and sand, uh, washing it and hand sanitizer work is just a sheer reason of it just remove the virus, it just wash it off. Um, you'll be surprised how many, how often, in terms of microbiology and things like that, it's really just a physical removal. That's why a lot of research have shown now rather than going um, when you go to the bathroom rather than using those hand dryer or hand blower thing a hand blower is actually doesn't work that well and in fact if your hands are dirty and you put it in the hand blower what will happen is that the strong wind will blow the the water uh, particles water particles water droplets out off your hand any bacteria or virus that's attached to that and just blow it all over the room. That's why they stop really recommending people using that now. But if you're using just a paper towel, it wipes off and actually whatever bacteria or um, viruses, it will just go into the stays in the toilet, uh, paper towel. So that's what they're recommending um, right now. I know you still have those hand dryers all over the place. I don't remember whether the school we use those or not, but that's what the research has shown. Um, what are some symptoms? Here are the cases. You can read that yourself. Now, one of the things I will add in here, which is not on this slide. Yes, you hear this whole thing about 2% fatality rate right? But, so in some ways, it doesn't sound that bad. But if you think about it, hold on. But if you want to think about it, now, government estimate, scientists and government estimate is that 30 to 70% of Canadians are going to be sick or infected with the COVID-19. Let's just say a 2% fatality rate. That is still a lot of people. I'm not going to do the math with you right now, but that's still a lot of people. Yes, most of them are older people, but younger people are not immune. So do your part. Do your social distancing or physical distancing, whatever it is called. Make sure you wash your hands. Okay? That's a serious bit. Now, testing for COVID-19, there are test kits. Um, there are test kits, that's for it. There are reasons why. Now, in terms of, they are saying don't go, CDC say don't, do, don't go test it if you are doing this. These are the reasons, okay? Sometimes, yeah, you might go and get tested, but the testing sites might have other people, and some of them are positive and then you might come in contact who knows um also another thing is that in north america right now and today is march 25th we are facing a shortage of testing kit if you look at other countries in asia uh, korea is managing really well with the flattening that curve I don't remember about um, Singapore and China, 
but they were able to do a lot more test kits. So Canada and US is slower. So in this case, um, we're trying, we're trying to catch up, but that needs to, uh, that needs to get solved. Okay. So right now with, if you can't, since you can't test every single person or a lot of people, the best thing to do is social distancing. Okay. So what are the treatments? Here are the things. Um, now the problem is this, because one of the main symptoms is shortness of breath and people having a hard time breathing. Seems like the mucus or the mucus secretion in the lung is really just going to whack. So you actually need to use ventilators and pure oxygen to help people breathe. This science is not hard. The difficulty is when you have so many people having requiring the ventilators, what are you going to do? You're going to start running out. It's really just to keep people alive long enough so that their body can produce their body and their immune system can catch up so that they will recover on their own. Okay. It's really just to make sure they're not dying. Um, keep them alive as long as possible. Drugs, it'll take a long time. New drugs usually take a long time to test. A, to test whether it's, is it going to kill someone? Um, kill someone. B, is it really effective? Is it really effective? C, how effective? Okay. These are what you call clinical trials. Okay. Clinical trials. And usually it takes a long time. Um, what Trump said about the whole thing about the malaria pills and malaria, malaria drugs. Yeah. Don't trust that guy. He does not have any science background. Okay. Even the guy that, yeah, even the director of the, of the national research said right, who was standing right behind him, just say, just immediately contradicted him. So don't believe that guy. Um, antibiotics. The body makes antibiotics to attack the infected cell. This is actually what happens if you, when, if you're alive long enough, i.e. your symptom is so not so bad that it kills you, um, you will actually, your body will, your own immune system will create antibodies to fight off the virus. That's how you recover. Now, so what they're actually doing right now and actually thinking about is this. Uh, we can potentially give someone antibiotics, antibodies made by another body. Now, um, I think when Miss G made this, this was uh, the test site wasn't thinking about it yet. But lo and behold, FDA, I think yesterday, yes, yesterday um, said they're going to tests on this might be now this here convel convalescent plasma um convalescent plasma what it means is someone who actually recovered from COVID 19 so a human who recovered from COVID 19 they're going to take their blood they're going to spin it down and take the plasma and this plasma will contain the antibodies okay the antibodies and they're gonna try to use that as a treatment. It may work, we don't know, but historically using plasma or antibodies from a recovered person to treat the sick, it has been done before. So we're gonna try this method and see whether it works or not, okay? There are some shortcomings or limitation you need to keep re-ministering, okay? Now, again, vaccine, we're going to take a long time, so don't trust Trump on what he said about this. It will take time, okay? So, pandemic, okay? They classified this um, on March 11th. What's the difference between epidemic and pandemic? 
Pandemic is just a global scale. Epidemic is a local area that's spreading. Okay, spreading and out of control, and pandemic is just bigger. Now, a lot, a few, a number of years ago, there is actually a category and a list of、uh, criteria. There was six different criteria、um, for World Health Organization to use what is an epidemic and what is a pandemic. They changed the rules a few years ago, so they no longer use as that. But the idea is still: if you see a disease in a number of different continent and they are spreading between humans, so when you hear this term "community、uh, infection" or "community spreading," this is what they mean. Basically,、uh, if one of you went to New York, for example, New York is a good example right now. They are having a lot of cases. So let's just say,、um, one of you went to New York over the break. You came back. You caught the coronavirus there. Okay, that's a travel or imported case. But let's just say, you sneeze on me, and now I got it. Then in this case, I would be considered a community case. Okay, I caught it from the person、uh, that went traveling. I did not travel. So that would be a community spread. So that's a big difference, and that's one of the criteria they look at between epidemic and pandemic. Okay. Any question? Write it down, and then we're gonna use the next video to talk about morals.